the Business Advisory Implementation Development Service. The Bates program is a major step forward. A game changer for the Black business community. Designed specifically for Black entrepreneurs, by Black entrepreneurs. Bates provides expert help to Black businesses. It addresses the most important barriers to Black success. Entrepreneurs need four things to be successful. Access to capital, to network, mentors and sponsors, access to processes. Une façon de travailler avec les entrepreneurs pour vraiment les amener à optimiser et maximiser leur projet entrepreneurial. We're going to sit with you and we're going to wrap you around the best experts we have. Cash Pro will help Black business owners get access to more payroll resources. Anybody that needs to get more funds to amplify their business. ACBN, we do grant writing sessions. The support, it's tremendous. I have a lot to learn and I feel as though I'm, I'm in good hands. I'm really looking forward to all that we're going to be able to accomplish together. Please check out BBP. Land Acknowledgement As we gather together, we acknowledge the sacred land on which we reside. It has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was the subject of Dish with One Spoon Wampoon Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and Confederacy of the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, this gathering place is still the home of many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. We are also mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. Last but certainly not least, we acknowledge the people of African descent who were brought here against their own will or in search of a safe place to live their lives and raise their children. Reconnaissance des terres. En nous rassemblant, nous reconnaissons la terre sacrée sur laquelle nous résidons. C'est un site d'activité humaine depuis 15 000 ans. Cette terre est le territoire des Premières Nations Huron, Wandat et Petun, les Séniques et plus récemment les Mississauga de la, Crédit, de la rivière Crédit. Le territoire était sujet de l'alliance de la ceinture Wampun plat avec cuillère, une accord entre la Confédération Iroquois et Confédération des Ojibwe et des Nations alliées à partager et à prendre soin pacifiquement pour les ressources autour des Grands Lacs. Aujourd'hui, ce lieu de rassemblement est toujours le foyer de nombreux peuples autochtones de toute l'île de la Tortue et nous sommes reconnaissants d'avoir la possibilité de travailler dans la communauté sur ce territoire. Nous sommes également conscients des alliances brisées et de la nécessité de nous efforcer de guérir toutes nos relations. Dernier point, mais non le moindre, nous remercions les personnes d'ascendance africaine qui ont été amenées ici contre leur volonté ou à la recherche d'un endroit sûr où vivre leur vie et élever leurs enfants. Hello, everyone. Hello and welcome to Bades. Welcome back. If this is your, if you are returning and welcome anyone that is new and joining us today, we have a special guest that we look forward to bring up that is going to make your website pop. Okay. Make your brand pop. Make people, when they come to your website, they're like, I definitely need to book this person. I need to buy this product. All right. So I'm going to tell you about Kara and then we're going to bring her up. Kara was born and raised in Toronto, Canada, and is a Trinidadian and Chinese heritage. She graduated from York University with a bachelor's degree in communications. Oh, let me, let me make sure she say, I say, she graduated with honors, okay, in communications and from Seneca College with a journalism broadcasting diploma. Following post-secondary, Kara worked as a journalist for various media organizations in Toronto, such as Rogers TV and 680 News. 
She worked in Malawi, Africa for four years as a human rights journalist and TV producer and worked in Jamaica for three years as a communications consultant for the Women's Center of Jamaica Foundation. Kara has extensive experience working within the nonprofit sector, but more recently joined the public sector, working as a communications specialist for a few Canadian munici municipalities. Uh, Kara and her husband own a registered incorporation called the Randalls Group, Inc. And also Kara is also a proud mother of two girls, eight years old and 10 months old. So let me go ahead and spotlight and bring up Kara. Kara, where are you? <laughs> Thank you so much, Victoria. Hi, everybody. I am so excited to, I don't know if you guys hear my baby in the background. She's, she's excited too about this, which is nice. Um, but I'm so excited to, to talk to you guys about this that I love. Um, well, first of all, let me just say, give me a second. First of all, let me just say um, thank you so much to the BBPA for giving me this platform um, and to share what I love to do. I'm going to hop right into it because we have a lot to talk about. So uh, first off, I'm not going to go into the whole spiel about what a brand is. I'm sure a lot of you know what a brand is. Um, and, you know, if you've been a part of these BBPA workshops, you, you've been a part of these mar marketing workshops and you hear all about what a brand is. And I know that you know that a brand is more than just your color and your logo and your website, right? It's, it's, it's intangible. However, uh, what you do need to know is that your website plays an integral role in branding your company, right? So with the website, you provide a place for your consumers to see what your brand is all about um, and, and learn more about you, your products and your services. Um, so I'm going to assume that a lot of people that are here today, you guys applied for Bades and maybe you need a website, which is awesome. So this presentation, we're going to go through stuff that I'm going to require from you after the BBPA pairs us together, because we're going to put that in the, in the, 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 the air that they're going to pair us together so I can work with you and, and give you guys a, an amazing website. Um, but I'm also going to uh, take you inside the mind of a web designer and let you understand, you know, why we do what we do. Right? I'm going to give you guys some rule of thumbs uh, when it comes to web, web design, but ultimately how, um, how these rule of thumbs will just make your brand pop. All right, so let's get into it. Oh, her. by the way, the, um, that's, that's Felicia there holding my website and she's excited because uh, she's, she's also featured on my website. So if you go to my website, karadesigns.ca, Cara you'll see her there and she's just, she's just happy that she, she gets to be featured on my website. <laughs> Anyways, so what are um, some key essentials to making your brand pop through web design? Brand consistency is so important. It's vital for your website to be consistent with your branding, which means you're gonna use the same colors, right? The fonts, um, and then of course your logo. And this should be uniform across the board. So all of your branding material. It should all just be uniform. I, I wanna talk about words. Words, it's, it's important to be consistent when it comes to your words. I'll give you an example. If you are an organization and maybe what you do is you support neighborhoods and on your website, you talk about how you support neighborhoods and you, you, you provide grants to neighborhoods. And then on the next page, you're like, you support communities and you provide grants to communities. That's confusing. You know, you're, you're, it might be the same thing, but you're switching it up and you can start to confuse your audience. So you wanna be careful with what the, the words that you use. Um, and that's where knowing what your, your key messages are for your brand, for your company um, is important because once you know those key messages, it's, it, it, you won't be mixing, mixing up those words. Okay, so brand consistency will help you when it comes to just building trust and credibility for your business. Let's talk about domain. Um, a domain name is a very essential part of your website's identity. Your domain name is your face of your company just in a, a URL format, right? Now, um, the ideal situation is you pick the dom domain name that is your company. You pick the, your company name is your domain name. That's the ideal situation. You could use an acronym, but my recommendation is only use an acronym if your brand um, or product is regularly referred to those initials. Um, 
there's a lot of questions in regards to what do I select? Do I select .com, .ca? Um, obviously, .com is most ideal. It is universal. Um, however, there might be a situation where, you know, you can't get the .com because it's already been taken. Um, if you are a Canadian company, .ca is perfectly fine as well. Um, and then if you're an organization, .org is great. Uh, there's also .net, which, like, I mean, that's, like, if you really have to, right? Like if, if you've tried everything and it's just not working out, then .NET you can do. Um, so I wanted to just highlight these three here that, are, that you see on the screen. Um, Frederica Black Events. So she is a, an event coordinator and perfect. She got the perfect domain, which is the name of her company. Uh, something that I do want to highlight is once you secure your domain, domain, domain name, that's a tongue twister, uh, secure it. You also want to make sure you secure those social media handles as well to match and pair with your domain. It just looks great for branding. It looks professional. It's so clean. When we're doing, when I'm, when, when I'm going to be developing your branding material, it will look so nice on all of your material, right? So luckily for Frederica, she was able to secure her Facebook, her Instagram, and her LinkedIn. Twitter, she wasn't able to get it, and that's fine. What she did is she did the next best thing, which is the name, her name, right? So that's perfect. Same with FitRev. FitRev was able to secure uh, Instagram and Facebook, and not for LinkedIn, but they did the next best thing. Island Lashup is the most ideal situation. If you can, if you can do what Island Lashup did, company name and all the social media handles is Island Lashup, then you pop in, you pop in. All right, let's move on. Let's, let's talk about the appearance of your website. A site needs to be visually appealing, polished, and professional. Please don't compromise on that. You, you do-it-yourself website builders, please don't compromise on that. It's so important. This is Omar here, and Omar is looking at my website, and he's like, damn, that's a good-looking website, and I want your clients to be like, damn, that's a good-looking website. Let's talk about font. I see this a lot when it comes to graphic design and web design. I see people using so many fonts and I understand there are so many fonts that are really pretty and nice and you're like, oh, I don't know which one to select. So let me just use them all. Don't do it. That's like brand suicide. Don't do it, please. Stick to two max. You can do one, you can do one font and then use the different variations of that one font. So you know how you have like the bolds and the italics of that one font do that. That looks great. It looks more professional, more clean. It's simple. It's neat. Do, do, just please, like, don't, don't make my eyes bleed, people. Don't make, don't make them bleed. <laughs> all right, so white space. Uh, that's This is probably the hardest of all design principles, is to learn uh, or master white space. And the, once again, I've seen a lot of do-it-yourself websites where, you know, <laughs> Text is scattered all over the place, you know, pictures all over the place, just one big hot mess, right? White space is used to help guide your user's eyes. It adds a lot of class to a design as well. So don't be afraid to leave some holes or some open gaps in areas. And I know a lot of inexperienced designers, you know, you're tempted to put something in every, every corner. Um, but design is about communicating a message. Design elements should be supporting that message and not adding noise to it. So, and just remember, if you're not making that brand pop, it's going to flap. All right, just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, I, I still want to continue with, with white space because white space doesn't necessarily mean it has to be white. Uh, white space is basically negative space. It's areas on your website that are just intentionally left empty. So if you want to take a look at Google, for example, I think Google does a really good job um, with their, their homepage. It's just so simple and calm. Um, there's, it doesn't appear cluttered or confusing or overwhelming. Um, if you look there at the bottom where you see Go Weave Blazer, I think they do a great job because what they're doing is they're drawing attention to their CTA, their call to action button. So you see that button there where it says shop now, your eyes just boop goes right there and you're going to want to click that button and that, that, that's that's exactly what they want that's their goal right um so there's no clutter it gives less work for your eyes and your mind i love this one here where you see uh to the right the footer now if you notice that they have a lot of pages in their footer but the way that they space it out it doesn't make it seem like there's a lot of pages right um so 
this white space is 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 very very important and um it's just something that we designers do so if you're looking at it you're looking at a, a design that um a professional website designer built for you and you're like hey, i don't know about this can you just like put these closer together no that's <laughs> we we know we do what we do because we have a reason for doing what we do all right so when possible Replace your text on your website with infographics or icons. It grabs attention. We are visual creatures and a well-designed and attractive graphic can pull attention to your site. Icons and infographics, they're so much fun, they're engaging, and it's just so much better than just plain text. Um, it's very easy to follow uh, the information. You can convey information effectively. Um, it increases your readership. You know, the average user um, skims through a website, right? Rather than read the full thing. So you don't want to. You don't want to have a situation where your website is just so overcrowded it gets overwhelming, and somebody ends up not even skimming through it. It also demonstrates expertise, infographics especially, because they use tables and graphs and charts and all other information. So it's a visual representation of extensive research. It shows that you are the subject matter expert and overall it just enhances your, your company's credibility in the marketplace. And last but not least, it makes complicated information more understandable. You know they, that, that saying where they say pictures is worth a thousand words? So th that's exactly what it is, right? Effective infographics convey lots of data and information in just a small space. Um, they extract the most essential facts and figures and then just deliver it in a re relevant way. All right, y'all, so let's talk about content. Um, so another thing that will make your brand pop is good quality content. And when I say content, I mean, I'm talking about your text, I'm talking about your reviews, I'm talking about your blog posts, I'm talking about your images, your videos, your audio files. And this is where you come in um, because this is what you're going to provide me, the web designer. I'm going to ask you, give me your content. I need your content because without that, we can't make your website pop, right? So let's get into it. I'm going to, I'm going to highlight two of the key. First one is website text or sometimes called copy, which uh, good quality text and copy means you know your audience, you've written stuff that will resonate to them. Okay, if you know your audience, but you don't know how to write for them, then what I suggest you to do is just check out some of your successful competitors and see how it is that they do and what they do. Another thing is, you know, knowing what the goal is for your website, or better yet, what, what is your call to action? A call to action is a prompt or a website that tells the user um, to take some sort of specified action, right? So what do you want your website visitors to do? So some examples of some uh, call to actions is, you know, shop now, or, you know, subscribe today for some exclusive content, or call us today and get started, right? So there should be a call to action, especially on the landing page of your website. And also let's remember that people do not like to read. Remember what I said? They just like to skim through. So you just want to make sure your copy is skimmable, right? Uh, get straight to the point. Don't be repetitive unless, you know, it's unless it's with your call to action, but straight to the point, simple, break it down and make it easy for people to look for what they, they really want. All right, can we, can we do a commercial break? Let's do a commercial break. This commercial break is brought to you by Top Scholars Editing. All right, so what I want to talk to you about is um, having a professional editor or proofreader look through your content. Let me tell you, it does wonders. You're looking to make that website pop. You really need to consider having your text and copy edited. Um, it's basically like a quality control check, right? You just want to ensure that there's no typos, uh, punctuation mistakes, grammatical errors, or inconsistencies, uh, anything like that. And, and what I love about, about this site specifically is it, 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 it's exactly what it says it is. It's quick, it's convenient, it's affordable. Um, all you need to do is go on the site. There's a form where you can get an instant quote 
and you upload your document that has all your text on it, they'll email you an invoice and you pay it and boom, bang, your, your content, is your, your copy is proofread and edited and it gets sent back to you. Right, so simple, so easy. These are professional editors working in the background. And the best thing of all is it's a black owned business. Support your people, y'all, support your people. All right, back to the original broadcast. Um, a simple way to increase the visual appeal is to use high quality images. Oh my God, can we talk about this, y'all? Can we talk about this? This is so important. High quality product images especially are important for those who have an e-commerce website. And um, I want you guys to look at, uh, what are we calling her? Patricia over here. Patricia is doing a selfie. You see on to the, the left there. And I didn't want to exclude her because you see how she's using a smartphone and she's taking a picture. And some of you might be like, oh no, I would never use a smartphone to, you know, put a picture of, um, use a, a picture from a, a, a smartphone. Smartphones today, they come with really high performance cameras. So even though I'll always recommend that maybe going to a photographer is best if you're not especially tech savvy, uh, but if you don't have the resources to hire a photographer to do your photos for your website, then go on to YouTube and look up some of the tutorials on how to work your, your smartphone. Because I'm telling you, smartphones can produce some really great, great pictures. All right, so we're going to get a little interactive here now, okay? So I'm going to need you guys to think like a web designer, okay? So you're a web designer and a client sent you these two photos to add to their website. All right, this is, um, I think this is Harry Styles. He's like from a boy band or something. Which one of these photos do you think will make your website pop? Can you put in the chat, is it picture number one, which is, uh, I don't know if you can see my cursor, maybe not. Picture number one to the left and picture number two on the right. Put it in the chat. Which one do you think will make your website pop or make your client's website pop? Picture number one. Okay. So you guys are awesome. You guys are officially web designers. You selected the right picture. Picture number one. Why picture number one? Well, this picture obviously is a lot better in terms of quality. Um, and as you can see, you know, this, this, this can really make a website banner stand out. And if you take a look here at the banner that I created, um, you can see there's two call to actions there. Um, you can take note of the, you know, the short and simple text uh, that's not going to overwhelm our website visitors. And um, yeah, that's it. And we, we, we're using some of that white space as well. But this is what will make your website pop. Some nice high quality pictures. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, so your client has an e-commerce website and they're selling hair and skin products, and they send you these two photos. You know, one has a plain, boring background, and um, the other is like they kind of set up a, like a whole product photo shoot. You know, they put a like a piece of long leaf at the bottom there and some little flowers at the top. Uh, so you're a web designer now, so you like a web designer, which one of these will you use to make your client's website pop? Picture number one, picture number two. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, you guys are on the ball. Picture number one. If you said number one, you are absolutely correct. This image was so much better in terms of quality and also easier to manipulate, right? The original image, it had a boring background, but look at that. Look what we could do when we just slap on a better background there. You see that? And the other image, now I get it. Like I appreciate the work that the person did to set up a little photo shoot and stuff, um, but it just, it was, it would have been harder to manipulate. The quality wasn't the best. And mind you, I could still use it. If it was good quality, I could still use it maybe on your landing page, but just this picture was easier to do different things with. All right, and that's another thing I do wanna mention is just make sure you're consistent when you're taking your image, you're taking your photos. So like, for example, if you want all your images to have a little bit of a dim light, just make sure all your images look like that. Or if, if they, if you want it to be, you know, you want the image to have a natural light background, just make sure all of your product images look like that, okay? 
here we go, let's do this one now. So your client is selling clothes on their site. If they sent you these two photos. Um, you know, one here was they hired a professional photographer to take this beautiful picture. You see how they paired those clothes together nicely and they match them so nicely. And they add a little rose to accent it. Look at that, Hot, right? And then there's this image here where they probably just throw the dress on the, the hardwood floor and, and snap a photo with their, their smartphone, I think. And then you see a little flash there. You see the little flash there on the, right there, like a flash, <laughs> you see that there? Anyways, now you're a web designer and your, your client sent you this. Which one is going to make your website pop? Let me see it. Is it number one or number two? Seems like you guys are confused with this one because I don't see much. All right, so it looks like most of you had said number one. Are we ready for this? If you said number two, clap for yourself. Clap for yourself. Remember what I said? Do you remember what I said? What smartphones can do, the power of a smartphone? They can take some good pictures. Look at that right there. You see that? Is that not making your website pop? Is that not beautiful? You could do so much with that image. You could pair it up with den denim, other denim, right? Or even just like what they did with that first photo, you could pair it up with a nice little pink bag or something like that. There's so much you can do with that image. Now, I'm not saying that number one image I wouldn't use. Like I said, I could still use that on your landing page or somewhere else, but I could do so much with that second image. Look at that right there. That's beautiful. That's popping. <laughs> All right, this might be the last one. All right, so here we go. So your client is selling teeth whitening products, right? And you asked for your client to send some pics of their customers who used their products. So they send you these two pics and then you're like, damn, Michael B. Jordan is your, is your, oh my God. So, you know, you faint a little, you, you, you fangirlish a little, you know, you get a little starstruck. Then you, you compose yourself because you're a professional web designer. And now you have the hard decision in picking one of these two beautiful photos to make that website pop. We know both of those photos will make the, okay, let's, let's be honest here. Both of these photos will make the website pop, but we need to choose one. Which one are we choosing? Are we choosing number one? Or are we choosing number two? Ooh, this is tough, ladies. This is tough. Oh, so I don't know if it's tough for you men, but ladies, it's tough. <laughs> My husband in the background's like, ladies. <laughs> Yeah, both, right? I know, this is a tough one. I know, oh God, it, it was even tough for me as a web designer. I, I, yeah. All right, are we ready? Are we ready for this one? Because I think most of y'all are saying one. Well, guess what? We're picking number two. Look at them pearly whites, y'all. Look at them pearly whites. <laughs> pearly whites and all of them gums up there. Because what, what are we doing? We're making a website about teeth whitening products. We need to see them pearly whites, y'all. Yeah? But not only that, what I didn't like about the first image is it cut off his, his head, his uh, forehead, and his chin. You saw that? So I don't know what's going on with Michael B. Jordan in that photo. I don't know if he had acne, he was trying to hide it up. But we don't want people thinking that, right? Like, we, girl, we, we don't want to think that Michael B. Jordan got acne. It's too perfect, right? Flawless. So we're going with number one, making it pop. All right, thank you so much for participating. That was fun. Let's continue with this. So another key essential in making your brand pop is just ensuring your website is up to date. Oh my gosh, please update your website. Your clients and potential clients are coming on your site to find out information about you or your products or your services, right? And if you're not updating that information, uh, you have the potential of losing it, right? Updating your website also says something about your company. It says that your company is able to stay on top of things. It says you're good at communication, right? And if someone says, um, and, and another thing it says is that uh, your clients can trust you. Uh, another thing is plugins. A lot of websites require um, regular checkups to maintain, you know, security and plugins um, and performance and all of that stuff. So just making sure you're going in, popping in and making sure, you know, your plugins are up to date. Uh, uh, consistent website maintenance is, is very much so an essential part of upkeeping any site, but especially, and I want to say this, like, please, if you don't take down any notes and take this note, especially for e-commerce websites. 
you need to be going in there regularly and checking up and making sure everything is, is working fine. You need to test your site's functionality. A lot of the times when um, uh, your server is doing updates, it could sometimes possibly break things on your website. Your images could break, um, your buttons can stop working. So it's very important that you're going in and you're testing your the site's functionality. Now there is a service that, you know, Kara Designs does offer y'all. And it's called my special web maintenance package. And I can do it for you. If you're not tech savvy, I don't mind. I don't mind. <laughs> All right, let's continue because we are, this is, we, we, we're on a roll, but we're, we're on the, the, the final last slides. And I do want to talk about some very, very important key, key web qualities to make your web, your brand pop. And I'm not going to go into uh, a lot of details of these because, you know, I can't give out all my goodies. I'm a business too. Um, but here's my pitch to you. And here's why, you know, you will need Kara Designs in your life. Not only will you be getting all that I mentioned today, but you're getting a responsive design, which means that your website will look good and work on any device at any resolution. And also user-friendly on any device. You might be saying, oh, well, Kara, you know, um, those do-it-yourself websites offer that as well. Okay, fine. But what if it's a situation where, you know, your website's desktop, desktop version um, needs to be different from your website's mobile version? So I'll give you an example where this might be a, a situation. Let's say like an insurance company, right? The, the desktop version, um, they might focus more on promoting their services but their mobile version may contain more information on how to register, you know, a car accident, right? So that's something to, to take note of when you are getting prepared and ready to, to have your, your website designed is does your mobile version, should your work mobile ver version look a little bit different from your desktop? You, that's where you, you knowing your audience will come into play. SEO, uh, okay, so search engine optimization. I'm sure you guys heard this a lot. SEO, SEO, SEO. Yes, we've all heard it, right? It's the process of improving the quality and quantity of web traffic from search engines like Google and Yahoo and Bing and all those. And of course, you know, I'm going to help my clients optimize their websites for, for search engines, but there is, um, there's also optimizing features that help speed up your site. That's very important. Um, by the way, something that I do want you to know when it comes to SEO, because I've had a few clients ask me like, you know, do you do that? Can you help me with my SEO? And um, yes, I, I provide three services, right? Graphic design, web design, and web maintenance, right? I don't do um, marketing services. And so SEO, what you need to know about SEO is, SEO is content marketing. It's about what you or your marketer, marketer does to build the visibility of your website. So it's not only what's being happened in the back end of your website, but a lot of it is what you're doing in the front to push your website out there. Okay, because I can only do so much in the back end, but if you're not, you know, raising aware or your marketer's not raising awareness of, of your brand, then it's not going to go anywhere. Okay, but anyways, that's a whole other topic. Like I said, I can't give away all the goodies. Um, and then there's, of course, the fact that I am developing a custom design website for you. This ain't no template thing, y'all. This ain't no template. Um, I've, I always tell people, you know, I don't use proprietary websites. Proprietary websites are websites like Squarespace, Wix, and Shopify. Now, before you at me, I'm not saying those websites are bad. They're great. Um, if you are, you know, if you're able to, to, to master it and make it look good, I've seen some amazing amazing Shopify websites. Like they look so nice, so fly, right? But me as a web designer and a graphic designer, I'm, if I'm using a proprietary website, I'm limited to what I can do with design, right? Um, proprietary websites, they have their templates. You can customize based on what they want you or allow you to customize. I work with WordPress because it's an open source CMS content management system. It allows me to make whatever adjustments that you desire. Um, CM, uh, proprietary websites, they, they don't want you to see their code. So they, they block their code or they have their own coding that is harder for you to understand. So this is something, if you're coming to me, just know that I'm not doing a Wix. I'm not giving you Squarespace. I'm not doing that. I'm doing a custom design. If you see something on a website and you're like, oh my God, can we do something like this? I can replicate any website. I'm not going to recommend it. Um, we're going to we can, we can use some of their examples, but we're going to change it around to make sure it fits your brand. 
right? And the last but not least is just a beautiful design. You get a beautiful design. And if you don't believe me, go and carry designs.ca and there is the proof for you. You are getting a beautiful design. All right, we're going back into a commercial break. Is that okay? Can we go back to this message is brought to you by advisors for entrepreneurs of color. All right, so just a brief about AFEC. I want to let you guys know. We're a team of four individuals um, with knowledge and skills in various business services, such as accounting and bookkeeping and business planning, um, investments, and of course, marketing and branding. And once a month, we facilitate workshops on various business topics. So we have a next session happening next week. And if you guys are interested in um, um, learning about business, then sign up. The website is right there, asec.eventbrite.com. And come on, come on out and, and learn more about, um, about, about business. And last but not least, we, we click in that Let's Connect button there at the top. We just clicked it and there you go. There's my information. Let's connect. Let's talk. Did you, are you a Bades um, applicant? Are you, do, are you needing a website? Let's talk because you know, I want to pair with you and I hope you want to pair with me. Let's work together. Let's make your website pop. Let's make it beautiful and let's make it happen. Thank you so much, you guys. If you have questions, shoot away. I'll give it to you, Victoria. Excellent. Thank you, Kara. And as I come up, let us know one more time how we can find out about that event that I saw all these familiar faces on. Oh, Ellen that's right. You know, I, sh I should mention, right. I should also mention, yes, three of the ladies, myself including, we are boss women, BBPA boss women. And then we have our boss male, Errol. Um, we're also BBPA uh, BAIDS um, service providers as well. Uh, so yeah, yeah, you guys can find us at afec.eventbrite.com and it's next week, Thursday, I believe, the, the 22nd is our next session and um, we have a really interesting guest. We're going to be talking about um, getting an investor, hopefully, to invest in your business. Um, we have an uh, angel investor that's going to be speaking, so very good for you guys who need investors you need to come out. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. I always want more time with debate speakers, so I definitely will be joining that. Um, so questions, drop your questions in the chat. And then if you want to raise your hand, you can raise your hand. Let's see. Okay. Question from Beverly and Kojo. If you're just starting your business, at what stage do you recommend doing a website? That's a good question because I've worked with clients who just was like, I have this idea, I need a website, bam, let me do it. And it worked out for them. But I've also had clients where they're like, um, this is what I want to do, um, but I'm not sure if I should do X, Y, and Z. So if you're in the stage where you, you, you know, you know for sure what you do, you, you want to do, um, come to me, let's talk. But if it's, just, if it's your, you're in a situation where you're like, you know what you want to do, but then you're not too certain, then you need to get a business plan. And that's where you're going to talk to Arrow and um, get your business plan first so that we can make sure, you know, certain things are laid out on the table, then he'll come to me and say, all right, we're good to go. This is what the person is doing. And once I have that business plan, I'll know exactly how your branding is going to look. Okay, perfect. Let's see, Camille. Hi, uh, hi, Cara. That was a very great presentation. So um, I do admin polishing and that's one of the services I offer is website reviews. And something that I notice a lot is um, where the website is not safe. Can you just talk a little bit about making sure that your visitors to your site doesn't see that message? And also, I know like this is probably like more for people in legal professions, but if you can just talk a bit about the copyright at the end of your webpage too, that would be great. Like if you, like when do you had just the current year or when do you had a year range? just as a website designer, like your perspective on that. All right, so I'll talk about the security aspect. Um, so, when you're, so when you're signing up with your hosting, um, you should always purchase as an SSL certificate, which is your security safety certificate. That's so important. That's gonna help protect your clients, especially when it comes to, if they're entering any um, uh, confidential information, your, your credit card information and all that, as well. You also want to have a terms of service page and um, or terms of conditions. So you're mentioning of your, all of your privacy information and all of that stuff. You want to also mention that as well, just in case um, a customer wants to know, you know, how are you protecting, how are you protecting uh, their information? 
Um, but that is definitely something that the host will help you with in, to ensure um, safety of your website. Uh, when it comes to copyright, I'd say it's usually the year um, that you would put. So the year that the website was updated, and if you go in and update it again, you can you can update that as well. If you if you're constantly doing updates on the site and doing new things, you can you can update it every year. Um, I don't usually do a range, um, just because usually the clients I work with, I'm updating their site all the time. So I just put in the year. Thank you, Tara. I think you're mute, Victoria. Is there more questions? <laughs> Thank you. That would help. Alethea. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought my screen froze for a second. Oh, okay. um, uh, thanks for that presentation. I had a question about color and your approach to color and how you go about choosing or recommending colors to the clients that you work with. Because sometimes we want to choose a color that we love, our favorite color, whatever that may be, but perhaps it's not the right color that will attract the kind of clients or customers we want necessarily. So what is your approach to that? Are we just going for a color that is all about our personality and what we like or should, or do we keep the clients in mind? How do we go about kind of figuring out what kind of color in terms of, um, you know, the brand identity and attracting the right audience? So that's where, you know, developing a business plan comes into play, because once we know what your business plan is, once we know what you're all about, who your audience is, then we can determine what your colors are. If you go online and you search um, color schemes and what color each color means and what color is best for what type of business or what color is best for, for what feeling, um, you'll see the suggestions that they make out there so that you can determine, you know, and my, my, my what I'm going to say is, always do um, what your audience or what your 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 target audience would would prefer because that is your your go-to right you're selling to your target audience so you just want to make sure everything you do is is um, pulling them in right so that's where definitely a business plan you'll definitely need a business plan to go through all of that just to make sure you know exactly who your target audience is once we know who your target audience is color is that question of color is not going to be a, a question anymore Okay, great. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Let's see. Naturally gorgeous curls. Naturally gorgeous curls. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I had to unmute. Uh, I didn't expect this fast reply. <laughs> anyway, um, Kara, great presentation. Uh, I just loved your energy and you actually make me want to work with you because you have a nice voice and that's important. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and, and very knowledgeable. And anyway, um, so I was just wanting to, well, somebody asked a question about um, working with you if we're in BP, BBPA. So if that can be answered, that would be great because for those of us that have websites and need help, uh, just how the process works. And number two, and in light of this presentation. Number two, I just wanted to know about um, plugins because uh, my website is with WordPress and the person that helped me do it, a friend of mine said the same thing, like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, WordPress gives you limitless options. So that's why he chose it. And then he helped me kind of manage it. But I'm, wa I'm wondering about plugins because, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. Like when I update them, Sometimes inevitably one breaks the site and last week I had one, you know, just say some, you know, those weird messages, listen, I'm not a coder and those messages. And then they're like, if you want to fix it, install this app. And I'm like, you guys might as well write this message in Mandarin because I tried to download this thing to fix this plugin thing that took over my website so people couldn't access it so then I had to go back to the last um saved what is it the saved yeah yeah revert back to the last version of your website yeah okay yeah so I'm glad you can translate what I'm trying to say but yeah. then I have done so much work because I was updating it and I had to redo it again 
So I just was like, I guess you need a coder to figure out like when it breaks your website or I want to remove whatever the problem like plugin is or what it is because it just happens sometimes and then it has that notice there. And that was, I just don't want to deal with that. But then I don't know, I don't know how to read the Mandarin of coding when they're saying, oh, it's whatever they're saying and then how to fix it. It's really annoying and frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So let me answer your first question. If you are a base applicant and you want to work with me, just once this sister calls you and you guys go through that, just let them know that you're interested in working with me and we can work together, no problem. Um, your second question in regards to plugins, absolutely. And that's why I said you need to constantly be updating or maintaining your website. It's so important. Um, but that's what they do. Sometimes they do break your website, unfortunately. What I would say though is before you add a plugin to your WordPress website, make sure you're reading the reviews of the plugin. Some plugins are not necessarily, all plugins are not good plugins. All plugins are not good. Same with apps. Just think of it, your phone, your app on your phone. You know, when you go through some apps, not like maybe five people have downloaded and all of them have negative, negative reviews. You need to review that and see what the reviews are of those plugins because some of them are just flop. Okay, some of them are just, it makes no sense. And you, there's probably other plugins that are doing exactly what you want, but have a higher ranking. So make sure you're looking at that, because um, that could be a reason why, is that, that the, the person who developed that plugin, they, maybe they're not updating their system to make it combat, compatible with WordPress. Um, and secondly, if it is breaking your site, you can contact the plugin um, developer and just be like, listen, your plugin is breaking my damn site. If you paid for it, especially, you need to let them know that this, it's breaking your site and they need to do something about it. You paid for that, right? So, um, but my number one is please just look and see uh, what the reviews are of that plugin and look to see how many people actually downloaded it. Cause it is quite possible that, um, um, it's new, it's fresh, and maybe the developers don't know what they're doing. Um, but just just message them and let them know uh, what's going on with your site. Okay, just, uh, can you hear me? Just a follow-up? Yes, yes. Yeah, so sometimes, okay, does it, does it always say in that message which site is the problem? It'll be like, I don't know, Elementor or something like that. When it has that broken message that comes up, is is the is the plugin problem always listed there? Um, you should. I, I just hang around in that message, and I'm like, "What's the problem?" Right. And so, I think like you just go in this panic mode, and I'm just like, I don't. Sometimes I can't figure out which one it was because on the weekend I updated all of them. And I'm like, oh my God, which one broke the site? And then usually it's, it just has that broken message. But this one, it completely took over the site. Like it was not accessible. Even when I went back, I, it just took it over. And, and when you go to the site, because I tried for my cell phone, it had that broken message mm. in there. It took it over. So that was like one of the worst things ever. Send so I, I wasn't sure. Send me, um, if you have my email address, I don't know if we, are we, can you guys still see my screen sharing? Um, I'll put it in the chat, but send me an email of what the error message that you're getting and I can, I'll help you out with that. No worries. I'll help you out and see what's going on there. Um, it could be a, also a situation with the, the server. We might have to ask the server what's going on, but until I see it, I'm not going to know exactly. So send me the information of, um, of what it's saying. Thank you. Thank you. Naturally gorgeous curls. And there's a question from Clara who wants to know where you're, where you're located. So make sure you drop your info in the chat. Um, question for you, Kara. What about website speed? Is there anything you can do about that? It just seems yes. like it just slows down sometimes. Yes, absolutely. And that's why I did talk about um, optimizing your website, but optimizing for website speed. So something like even having a cache um, plugin is very important so that you're able to, um, it helps with uh, speeding up your website. Um, but also too, like what I, what I, uh, what's very important is just the stuff that you're putting on your website. Um, I always say, don't have unnecessary pages. Don't have unnecessary pictures. Try not to fill your website with stuff that you don't need. Um, I'm not all about the whole <laughs> You know, like when you see websites and it's doing this and that and this and that and this and that. And the reason why I'm not for it, um, all the motions and stuff like that, is because there are some people that are, might be accessing your website and they are located somewhere in the boonies and their internet is horrible. And if they're trying to get onto your site and you have 
but then the whoosh, whoosh, whoosh is not loading, um, then right there's another bounce rate, right? You people that are gonna hop off your website right away. So, um, but there are, there are methods to optimizing your pictures and your pages um, and even just HTML codes and all of that stuff. And just to make the website go faster. That is something I definitely do for my clients as well. I'm not gonna give away all the goodies. So we're just gonna have to work together on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, let's see, Rose. Rose, are you there? We'll give Rose a moment. Rose, if you come back, I do have another question for um, Kara as I go through the chat, as we have a few more minutes left. Um, Kara, so on WordPress, you had the dashboard, right? So these are for people who may have that, that you know, behind the scenes in there, back there. What we had, we recently had, um, was it this week or last week? But we had a, a, a level up talking about big data and what you can look, look at um, on your own. So is there any information on your website as far as a dashboard or WordPress that people can look at for themselves to see is their website performing well in general? Oh, well, actually, there's a lot of websites that you can go on to and put, type in your website and it'll give you the performance of your information. And yes, you can also have that information in your dashboard as well. Um, there is, I can't remember the plugin name on the top of my head. Um, oh, well, Lightspeed, Lightspeed Cache is, a, is one that does it where you can see the performance and you can also see how that plugin is helping um, uh, your website if you didn't have that. If you didn't have page optimization, it shows you what um, it would be if you didn't have it and what, what it is now um, that you have it. So, but yes, there are also websites that you can go on. I don't remember the name of the websites where you can check um, all of that information. Actually, another, there's another thing I do, this is not part of your question, but there's another website that shows you how responsive your website is. You plug in your, your website and you can see how your website looks on all different various platforms, which is really good, which is key and which is very important because nowadays a lot of people go on websites using their phones. And so having, making sure that your, your um, website is responsive to Androids and iOS is so, so very important. Yes, yeah, so it is very important because you don't want people to, to leave because they just get frustrated, right? They can't see what they need to see. All right, so let's, Lorraine. Lorraine, hello. <laughs> hello, Lorraine. Hello, hello, hello. Um, oh, you know what? My background is going to have music because I'm outside and everybody's in a very nostalgic mood. Great presentation, Kara. Great, great presentation. Thank you, Laura. Guys, I'm upset at Laura. She said the bar from last week, and she just made me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, Lord. <laughs> as new entrepreneurs and as business owners in general, I believe that we should all have sales targets. And, you know, as our business is growing, as we want to help the economy, as I say in my accounting uh, presentations that accounting is about economy and the movement of economy and small businesses play a huge role in employment. How can we gear our websites to one, attract uh, great employees and to attract the type of great employees that we would want to work in our company? And how can we um, design our websites to attract or to make it known to the public that we are in a growth phase of our business? Sorry, I was muted. Good question. Um, and that's where having a professional website developer like your, your girl here, Kara Designs, come into the picture <laughs> and help you build a professional, non-amateur looking website. You need a professional looking website to attract professional looking people, right? Um, but also to just laying out that information, simple and straight especially on your landing page. That's why key messages are very important when it comes to your business. Know what your key messages are and we need to make sure we are making that key message known on the very first page, your landing page right there. Your call to action, you need some, you need employees, you need professional employees, that's your call to action right there. That should be on the first page right there. A button right there that says, listen, we're looking for you. Um, sign up now. You want to make $20,000 in, in, in so and so in a few days? Sign up right now. You know, put some incentives out there on your website so to, to attract them. Um, and then also, of course, making sure that you're specifying what the qualifications that you're looking for so that they know when they go on your website, they know that they need to meet X, Y, and Z. 
right? But this, this all goes back to just making sure your website is clean, well designed, well put forward, and you've got those messages, your key messages there that your website be popping that way. Awesome, thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for the question, Lorraine. All right, so before we go, Rose, Rose, were you able to come back? Are you there, Rose? Um, yes, I am. I I'm sorry, I apologize. I got pulled away before. My apologies. Just a second, sorry. I apologize. Um, um, Cara, again, your presentation was awesome. I really, really love your vibes. Um, really, really nice. Question I have for you. When it comes to me and a computer, that's like oil and water. So, um, social I'm media. I'm here for <laughs> no, no, it's really, really bad. Social media, I, I'm, I don't navigate any of it well at all. Yet my business would do so much better if I could. When I did try to do it, I keep messing it up. What takes the average person um, a couple of hours to do? Three weeks and I'm still trying to do it. So the problem is that I realize this is a complete waste of my time, I can't do this. However, I don't have the budget to do what, do the social medias that I need to do. And even to do the things that need to be done on the website. I got professionals and I paid them to set certain things up to a certain level. But if I don't do anything, because you kept mentioning the plugins and you got to keep updating and so forth, is there any way to make that I don't lose ground given that I have not been doing anything to update or to post or to do anything like that? Because I am really bad at it. So what I heard is you don't have the budget for marketing, um, but you also don't have the skill sets to, to basically make the brand pop. Um, so I did, a, I did a, a workshop a few weeks ago with AFEC and I talked about, you know, people who, who have a zero budget, what can you do, you know, to, 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 to make your brand known, um, to market your company. And this is where you're going to have to, I'm sorry to say this, you're going to have to put in the legwork. OK, um, you're going to have to allocate some time, whether it's like a few hours a week to learn um, social media. If you don't have the money for it to, to, to put into a professional, then you need to put in the time to do it. That's that's just it, it's as real as it is. Right. Like a lot of small businesses, that's what the situation has come to. However, now you are here at BBPA Bades Girl, and I hope you signed up for Bades because I am ready and willing to work with you. I'm going to make your brand pop. So oh I have you, <laughs> I will help you with all of that. That's no problem. Um, but just know that you know if there was no babes, um, it's you got to basically put in the time uh, to learn this stuff. That's just it is what it is. It sucks, but it is what it is. There's no easy way around it. Um, I don't know if you can find somebody that'd be willing to do it for free, but a lot of the times people are that are willing to do it for free they may be an amateur themselves. And you don't want to do that to your, your brand. You don't want to compromise um, your brand, the look of your brand, right? You want to make sure that it has a standard. Keep that standard. Don't compromise on that. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I was just wondering, it's naturally gorgeous curls. I haven't been able to get back to, hmm, is it the main page? And, and, I need help. Like, I can't get back. Girl, send I'm, me an email. Send me an email, girl. <laughs> Info no, no, I'm talking about this conversation. Like, I'm on my cell phone. Well, anyway, oh. I was just going to make, um, ask one other question. But I can't raise my hand because I'm still, it just says, done speaking and it's, your oh, microphone. You mean, um, Zoom. You're having issues with Zoom. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like, I can't get back to... Oh, there it is. I just swiped. Oh my God. Sorry. I just had one question. I didn't mean to interrupt. I didn't, I, this is my first time using this on myself. So I just had to swipe and I see everybody. My bad. <laughs> I was saying, if we have a sec, I have one question. I didn't want to interrupt. Just checking okay. with the moderator. You, you can have the final question. What? Okay, thanks. Question? Okay, Kira. So <laughs> I have this question. It might be specific to me, but um. When I started everything, my business, I didn't have a website. So people would like text me, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, their orders. 
And now the majority of my clients, since I've had a website since 2018, the majority of my clients still do that. Even though I try to promote my website, they are just like, hey, I'd like to order this, this, and this again. And it's text. And then I also use Square. So I send them a receipt electronically and I'll do all that. But really it's, and then I like punch in what they ordered on Square and then send them a receipt or whatever. And like I had problems with integrating Square with my WordPress, I need your help. <laughs> and so I'm just like, how do I get people to go over to that? Because they seem, I feel like I spoiled everybody and I just made it so quick and convenient. They're like, yeah, I can just text her and just get my stuff the next day. And this works for me. So, so just what is your opinion about that? So these are your clients and that's what they prefer right? They prefer to text you. These are probably what, like a handful of them. These are your it's, clients. It's not a, it's not a handful. It's the majority. It's not just a ha- five people. And then some people uh, have gone to the website and do both, but the majority of them prefer to message me because that's how it started. And it's like next day, same day or next day delivery. I do mobile delivery. So they like that. And that's what they're going with. So I'm not, I'm not going to say cut off that option. First off, I'm not going to say, because if that's what your clients prefer, it's always best to do what your clients prefer. However, I would need to take a look at your website because we can do some call to, we, maybe your website needs to fix up a bit. Um, make sure that you have a call to action. Um, make sure you have key messages on your website just to draw in people. Maybe it's, is it attractive? I don't know. I got to take a look at it. Is it, is it, is it something that your, your, your clients don't care to go on? Is it difficult for them? Is it user-friendly? These are questions that I need to know. Um, so send me your website so I can take a look and do a review of it. But I don't want to tell you to cut off that avenue of your, uh, with your clients just yet. That's what they prefer. Don't lose your clients over that don't lose your clients over that. Let's look at your website. Let's see what we need to do to fix it um, and, and make it look amazing and, and draw attention to it so that they would want to go to your website um, to, to purchase your items. But for now, if that's what they prefer, there's a reason why they prefer that, right? So just don't cut that avenue just yet. Excellent. Thank you, Kara. Thank you so much for answering all of our questions. And let's see if Michael, let's see if Michael is still available. He wanted to say some words. Um, But if not, I don't see him on the screen. Kara, tell us how we can find you. Um, No more about more follow you No more about you before we close. Yes, absolutely. Send me an email guys info at karadesigns.ca. You can follow me on Instagram. It's um, at karadesigns.ca it's exactly like my domain um, follow me send me a message I think there was a bunch of um, questions in the chat I, I couldn't get to because I'm answering so if I didn't answer your question send me an email go on my website and you, we can book a, a, a meeting I don't mind I do like free 15 minute consults and we can talk about it I can look through your website if you'd like um, especially if you're if you're a BBPA based a- a- applicant and even though the access, as assessor hasn't gone through, I don't mind going through that with you guys. So just um, book some book some time with me and I can go through that and, and try and answer all those questions. But yes, my website, karadesigns.ca. Excellent. Thank you so much, Kara. Well, we thank you. We, we enjoyed it. We're going to make our website pop. We're going to find you so we can bring in all those customers. And thank you everyone who joined in with us today. Um, it's always a pleasure and we look forward to seeing you next week. All right. Y'all have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>